Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to class. Today we are going to talk about systemic functions of language. If you recall, we had at length discussion on Chomskyan linguistic competence, uh, which appeared in his work Theories of Syntax, 1965, very famous work that changed the paradigm and uh, generated a lot of debate and discussions on the nature and characteristics of language, its acquisition process and how we use it. Uh, so, a lot of response and reactions came to Chomsky's idea of linguistic competence, where Chomsky refers to uh, the grammatical and computational aspect of language in terms of syntactic structures as underlying representation in human mind. And he put major thrust on computational aspect of it. He imagines an ideal speaker and hearer situation in a homogeneous speech community. And he says that competence is unaffected by irrelevant grammatical factors like uh, shift of attention and interest, uh, you know, uh, concentration, lack of memory. So, these are the instances that he associates with the manifestation of these underlying structures like performance. So, this delinking of competence and performance and the setting of the goal of linguistic theory primarily to discuss and uh, you know discover these, these uh, grammatical structures, uh, you know put him in a spot for a lot of criticism. One of the uh, very effective and influential response that he got was from Delhams, who merged these two levels as composite one. Another response, very important response from uh, M. A. K. Halliday. M. A. K. Halliday described himself as a generalist in opposed to, in opposition to, uh, you know, Chomsky generative linguists. And his systemic functional grammar became a very fitting response to Chomsky's idea of uh, generative grammar. Uh, the, the way Chomsky looks at language acquisition, he invokes that uh, nativism and innateness, the idea of language acquisition device, universal grammar, uh, you know, a set of universal principles and parameters. This response by M. K. Halliday, systemic functions of language, is a reply to Chomsky's idea of grammatical competence where he talks about uh, a child acquiring these structures and rules without an instruction and uh, you know conscious effort. So, he does not talk about the performance or use of it, but he uh, talks about the acquisition of these underlying grammatical structures, what we call universal grammar, which is at the disposal of the child and then later on setting of the parameters. So, to this proposal by Chomsky, we have a fitting reply from M. A. K. Halliday and today we are going to talk about systemic functions of language. Uh, the works of M. A. K. Halliday have been compiled in 10 volumes and the last volume that is 10th volume is called Language in Society. In that volume, uh, Halliday underlines the primary function of language to be acts of meaning. Right? So, he talks about language as a semiotic process, but not in terms of science, but in terms of discovering meaning. 
So Halliday argues for a deep connection between language and social structure and uh, he considers language to be a social reality and he draws a parallel between language structure and social structure. They are interdependent. Halliday argues that language does not exist merely to reflect social structure, but it is social structures are embedded in language. Right. So, uh, what we see the departure from Chomsky's position here is that Chomsky talks about an idealized speaker here situation in a homogeneous speech community where the tacit knowledge about language and underlying grammatical structures are available to all the speakers and users of language without any variation. And he talks about linguistic competence refers to the computational aspect of language. But here what we see Halliday argues that language does not exist merely to reflect and represent social structures, but they are interdependent and embedded to each other. So, that is the departure he is making. And if I may quote Halliday, I quote, if we say that linguistic structures reflect social structure, we are really assigning to language a role that is too passive. Rather, we should say that linguistic structure is the realization of social structure actively symbolizing it in a process of mutual creativity, because it stands as a metaphor for society. Language has the property of not only transmitting the social order, but also maintaining and potentially modifying, modifying it. This is undoubtedly the explanation of the violent attitudes that under uh, certain social conditions come to be held by one group towards the speech of others. So, he is looking at language structures as the realization of and representation of social structure. So, language structures are not delinked de with social structure. So, we do not merely acquire structures, but we also acquire the context and the socio-cultural setting and the ability to derive meaning out of it. So, it is all about meaning making. It is not about a static form of language which is acquired in terms of grammatical rules and structures as Chomsky proposes, but an act of deriving meaning, an act of creating meaning out of it. So, this is what is the Halliday position. So, uh, you know on children's language development, Halliday evaluates the term acquisition in which language is considered to be a, a static product which the child acquires when sufficient exposure to natural language enables parameter setting. Now, look at, look at the background of this response. If you, if you recall the first language acquisition by a child, human child in Chomsky proposal that we call generative grammar, uh, we see that Chomsky proposes language to be tacitly, knowledge of language to be tacitly present at the time of birth of a child. So, child is born with a device called language acquisition device. This is what Chomsky position is. So, this language acquisition device is a is an inbuilt mechanism apparatus which a which allows a human child to learn any language and uh, this language acquisition device contains universal grammar a set of universal principles of language and this is triggered by primary linguistic data available to the child in the environment Chomsky argues that that data is fuzzy and incomplete. Still, the learning of a child is perfectly fine and child acquires perfectly fine grammar, develops a linguistic system. Uh, the, the exposure to the data or the input, the data input to the child allows the child to set parameters. So, basically, child is not learning new rules, but child is setting 
uh, child is labeling the linguistic units. This is what Chomsky says. And this ecstatic word in Halliday's proposal refers to that idea. So, what is it? On children's language development, Halliday evaluates the term acquisition. How does a child acquire a language? What do we mean by this idea called acquisition of language? In which language is considered to be a static product which the child acquires when sufficient exposure to natural language enables parameter setting. So, he examines this idea of acquisition and refutes the claim uh, of you know, Chomsky proposal of language being a static grammatical structure, underlying grammatical structure, you know, uh, present at that at an abstract level and uh, it needs trigger from the environment as an input, but not even, even the input is not sufficient once it is triggered learning takes place automatically. The language acquisition takes place automatically, child becomes autonomous learner and the, the environment and exposure to data allows the child to set the parameters. Halliday argues that the child develops a meaning potential, child develops a meaning potential. So, it is not merely a structure and set of rules that the child formulates in his acquisition process, in her acquisition process, but the child actually develops a meaning potential, the, the ability and the act of creating meaning. So, learning of a language is not merely language learning of structures, learning of language means learning of how to mean, how to derive meaning. So, form and the function both are merged as a composite unit and a child learns not merely a structure, but also the ability to make sense out of it. This is what is systemic, you know, functional grammar and, and Halliday refers to it as, you know, uh, functions of language. So, in 17, 1975, Halliday identifies seven functions of language for children in their early formative years. And we will go to all these seven functions in a short while. So, as a response to Chomskin acquisition, he evaluates this acquisition, the word, the term acquisition, and he tries to unravel the layers of this process by saying that a child not merely acquires a structure, but also the act of meaning, no? the, the ability to derive meaning, make sense out of it. So, he identifies seven functions a child acquires in the early childhood. When we say acquisition, the seven functions of language are, are acquired by the child. Children are motivated to develop language because it serves certain purposes of function or functions for them. The first four functions that Halliday talks about is to satisfy physical, emotional and social needs. So, learning is not uh, in that abstraction that Chomsky refers to in terms of a structure, but also uh, the motive and the need. So, this learning or acquisition is need driven, driven by the motive, social needs and motives. So, Holiday calls them instrumental, regularity, interactional and personal functions. So, out of seven, the first four are to satisfy physical, emotional and social needs. And that is why these four functions that he names and discuss, discusses are instrumental, regularity, interactional and personal. The next three functions are heuristic, imaginative and representational, all helping the child 
to come to term with his or her environment. So, this total seven functions that the child acquires via physical, emotional and social needs. And the three last three functions like heuristic, imaginative and representational allow child to relate to the external environment. So, unless the child has certain motive and unless the child makes some meaning out of this entire learning and acquisition process, language is not learnt merely in terms of abstract grammatical structure that Chomsky talks about. So, instead of you know delinking these two levels linguistic competence and linguistic performance, Halliday's proposal merges, you know, merges the two levels and treats acquisition of language as the converging point of these two levels where you have grammatical structure, a structure and function both. So, child acquires language in terms of acquiring both converging and emerging as a composite system called language. This is what Halliday's proposal is. So, Halliday has functions of language, seven functions he talks about. Instrumental, regulatory, interactional, personal functions, heuristic, imaginative and representational. So, out of the seven first four instrumental, regularity, interactional and personal functions, they represent the child's emotional, physical and social needs. And the last three heuristic, imaginative and representational allows the child to relate to the environment. So, together with these seven functions, child acquires a language and these seven functions allow a child to make sense of what he or she is acquiring and relating to the environment. So, this is the departure that he makes from Chomsky, where the acquisition combines the grammatical structures and these seven functions. Let us go to each of these functions, what do they mean? So, learning how to mean, a child learns structure and also learn how to mean, what do you mean by that structure, what is the you know, you know uh, relevance of that structure, significance of that structure, how to use that structure in an in, in appropriate socio-cultural context. So, instrumental, this is when child uses language to express needs, maybe you know child is hungry, child needs something. So, the fun, you know, basic function of the language for a child to demand needs, get the needs fulfilled, all kinds of needs, emotional needs, social needs, you know, personal needs. Uh, regularity, this is where child starts you know instructing and regulating things around him or her, go there, come here, sit down. So, these kinds of things. Then interactional where the child interacts and develops interpersonal relationship with people around, right. So, here language is used to make contact with others and form relationships with mother, with father, with other family members. So, child starts relating to people and interact. Then personal and what is that? This is, a, this is the use of language to express feelings, opinions and individual identity. So, child expresses emotions, anger, happiness, right and child starts developing self, understanding self. It helps child develop identity who I am, am I, right. So, child starts identifying 
and and expressing opinion, feelings, emotions and sharing. That is personal. The neuristic, when the child starts getting in you know you know information about the environment around the child, right? Didactic items, identifying things relating to environment. Imaginative, where the child starts creating things, creating stories, understanding stories, creating experiences, and you know, understanding experiences, sharing, you know, jokes, and all sorts of extended usages of language. And finally, representational. What does it mean? The use of language to convey facts and information. So the child understands how language expresses the objective reality around it, around him or her. So if you look at these seven functions, the first four are child centric where child expresses physical, emotional and social need. Right? It starts with the most basic function in that, that, that is instrumentality of language in expressing the fundamental basic needs of a child. Then to extending it to a regularity where child starts instructing and you know sharing people around and using didactic elements and other things to express his or her emotion. Interactional where interpersonal connections are made, child starts sharing with people around, making meaning out of it and personal where the child starts experiencing, thinking about uh, certain things around him or her, forming opinion and the individuality, sense of individuality, preferences, likings, dislikings. So, all these develop and child starts expressing all these as the fourth function of language. Heuristic that allows a child to relate to the external environment around him. He starts exploring information, getting information. Imaginative where child starts creativity in language and you know jokes, stories and other things, other experiences child shares with the people around him or her and the very uh, extended function called representational where the child uses the language to convey facts and information the child seeks and gets from the environment. So, this is how Halliday expresses and argues for seven crucial functions. A child learns along with grammatical structures while acquiring language, right. So, what we can deduct out of it? So, according to Halliday, as the child moves into the mother tongue, these functions give way to generalized meta functions of language. Halliday's work is seen as a competing approach to that of Chomsky, Chomsky's generative proposal. Language, he argues, cannot be equated with the set of all grammatical sentences, whether that set is conceived as finite and non-finite, infinite, refer to the Chomsky's proposal. Halliday's stated concern is with naturally occurring language in actual context of use in a large typological range of languages. So, what we see after looking at systemic functions of language as proposed by Halliday that the proposal in generative linguistics and specifically the Chomsky enterprise where competence and performance are delinked and Chomsky says that the primary goal of uh, you know linguistic theories is to explain this underlying abstract structure and he places major thrust, major thrust on computational aspect of mind and this is what he means by knowledge of language which assumes an ideal speaker hearer situation in a homogeneous speech community 
where competence is unaffected by you know observable and perceptible restrictions like lack of memory like shifting in attention and interest like occupied mind and fatigue so all other factors which are external to this variety of language that chomsky is talking about so he's talking about i language internalized language which is unaffected by these other grammatical concerns linguistic concerns so he delinks competence from performance but here in this proposal in systemic functions of language halliday argues that a child not only acquires these grammatical structures but also the functions associated with them and the child learn and acquires all these rules and grammatical structures right uh, as as an instrument right for making meaning in socio cultural settings and contexts so halliday's work the systemic functional grammar it's seen as a uh, you know a response to chomskyan generative grammar and the terms like you know competence linguistic competence the terms like you know acquisition the terms like you know finite or non finite set of rules all these terms are evaluated examined and responded to in halliday's systemic functional grammar so he draws a parallel and opposition to chomsky's proposal and halliday's seven seven functions of language right uh complements the chomskyan idea of acquisition and uh, halliday rejects the delinking of competence and performance he looks at it as a composite act of meaning so a child learns not only structures a child learns the, the ability to make sense of what uh, he learns uh, what like structures he learns right so this is it for now in this section uh we will come back with one more very uh, effective and uh, you know far fetching consequential uh, uh, you know response to chomskyan proposal by delhams in our next class thank you very much for now